Nugget's back in the hangar today. I've got maintenance to do to it, but I've been having a problem starting the airplane recently. The battery is getting weak, which means it's time for a new battery. I have an EarthX in my other plane and it's been phenomenal, but I found out EarthX has an STC for this plane. <laughs> they sent us a battery. Let me show you what's in this kit and let's get it installed in the airplane. So when I installed this guy inside of the Red Rocket here, I got lots of comments on how, oh, the battery's gonna explode, the, the battery's gonna catch fire. Guys, that's simply just not the case. What you're thinking of is lithium ion batteries, like the ones inside of our cell phones and tablets. And this is a lithium iron phosphate battery, and they don't catch fire and explode inside of the same way. They're a lot safer, and that's why the FAA has approved them from uh, EarthX to be able to put them inside of planes. So it's the certified planes. And so some of the things that they had to do though were crush it drop it submerge it high power penetration test overcharge it and an intense burn test some of those are really funny tests that they did but uh seriously i don't have any problems putting these inside of my plane i have complete confidence inside of earthx and the product that they made Real quick in the beginning of the video, I said that the battery was weak and that actually wasn't the case. It was this guy right here. My starter was absolutely toasted. So I replaced it with a working one and then gave it a little test so that we can compare a before and after the EarthX battery installation. So yeah, now, now we can actually get started. Now I've already pulled the EarthX battery out of the box here, but what remains is the sticker and this guy, the ETX 900 TSO 35 PA kit. And this is what makes it so that we can put this battery inside of the airplane. Okay, so the first thing that you probably notice is that the battery is a lot smaller than the battery that's in the plane. That's where this block comes in. This is a super lightweight fire resistant block. Then it's gonna go inside of the box and then the battery will just slide into it and keep anything from moving around. Additionally in here, we have tubing and all kinds of fittings and things to be able to mount the battery per the STC installation. And this cable right here, which has a light on it, as well as a fuse, um, this gets mounted in the panel and just above it's gonna be mounted this placard. And this little light will tell us if there's ever a problem with the system. We can also press this, which will give us uh, a test for the system, let us know if there's anything going on. So uh, let me show you the STC and how this is all gonna work. So you can see here, we have the ETX 900 TSO lithium battery. This is the documentation for installing it properly. And you can see, where is it? Right there, PA28. So this is for our platform. And we have the model 35 amp hour battery. So we just gotta follow the instructions that are right here. So that leads us inside of the airplane. So there's a panel here, let's remove it and get an idea of what is existing inside of the airplane. because. I'm pretty sure mine's not standard. What I mean when I say non-standard is not that it's done incorrectly. It's just, it's, it's just held together with zip ties. Now we all know that this is not the proper way to do this. And this lid is actually fairly destroyed. So it's a good thing that we're getting to this. And when I bought the airplane, the previous owner actually gave me a new lid. So that is gonna be going on over here. So I guess our first order of business is gonna be removing all of this and getting this battery out. So there it is, the old Concorde battery. And this thing's pretty heavy. A quick look up of this guy online and uh, we can see it's 29.5 pounds. Oh my gosh. Compare that to the EarthX and uh, it's 5.4 pounds. So not just size, but also substantial weight savings changing over to the EarthX battery. You know what I noticed when I was walking over here with this uh, was this guy right here giving the uh, classification of everything that it is. So that's pretty cool. I like that. Talks about the TSO and kit and all that stuff. But uh, yeah, let's get it installed. So uh, it's not hard from here with just that. And that. 
So from here, this is the old vent tube and we're gonna be removing this and it's obviously terrible. So uh, we have to drill holes in the side of the box for these vent tubes to go out and then install grommets. So we'll get that going and I also, let's see here, I'm thinking that should be, should be fine. Those will reach in and touch where they're supposed to and go in the original spots. Oh my gosh, that stuff was brittle and just kind of broke apart. I'm, I'm sure I could have done that differently, maybe a couple more stepped bits to be able to make that not happen, but we're gonna throw some grommets in there and make it good. Grommets in, batteries back in. Next step is to install these guys on either side, and there's also some that go there and there, so we'll get those put in. Yeah, editing Carl here, I don't want you guys to get confused. I ended up repairing the box and then Forgot to record when I started adding tubing to the top of it. So you're, you're just gonna miss some stuff, but uh, that, that's kind of what happened instead of the background. All right, so this is looking great. We have all of our tubes and things in. I'm happy with the result. Took a little bit of finagling to be able to get there, but uh, let's hook these leads up real quick. And there we have it. So now all that we have left is to be able to run these vent lines and I've already started running this side right here. The old ones are pretty messed up. So the plan is, is to take this one to go back and around and then come forward. And then they're going to tee together right down here. And then back down here, something that you can't see is where these vent tubes go to. So we'll be installing all of that to the aftmost tube vent because of the way the system works. and. Uh, that's going to make everything perfect in here, and then we can start working on electrical. So I'm going to get this busted out and finish real quick. Yeah, that thing was like really bad. <sighs> Glad we're replacing that. I uh, finally got smart and put a light back there, but uh, have all the vent tubing run. So this guy runs this way and down and back over to here. And then this one runs forward and this one runs straight down. And then uh, let's, let's go ahead and do this. You can see that it runs and clears back over here. There's a 90 degree elbow there. And then the vent tubes down there. So that portion is done and I could not be more excited about that. Now comes something a little bit more challenging and that's running that light and indicator to let me know if there's a fault with the battery. So I kind of got started on this already because I wanted to see what I was up against. And you can see all of the original wiring runs along here. And so this is where we're gonna run our new wire. That just means I've got to remove that one up there to be able to get it up there. And the plan up here is to put it right there where that blank space is. I don't know what was on that tag before, but I feel like that's gonna be a great spot to put it. Now, you may have noticed I'm in a different shirt and that's because it's monsoony here inside of Arizona. And so it's been wet and moist and here's some of the rain showers that I've been dealing with. My hangar has been flooding with water. So. When that starts happening, I have to leave. and. All of last week was basically a problem. And right now it's over 90 degrees in the hangar, incredibly humid. So I'm gonna come back and finish this tomorrow. And just like that, it's a new day. Let's get going. And we have access coming all the way forward. It was a lot harder to do that than I wanted to, but uh, here we are. And we're gonna go ahead and put everything right here. And again, that everything is this little light right here. And this is a test and indicator light. We can push on it and it'll give us a test, letting us know that it's functioning. But it also, through this little placard right here, tells us what's going on with the battery, any faults that are happening to it. So I went ahead and rounded the corners of this guy and it'll fit perfectly right there. And uh, I'm gonna put the battery or the light just right there. It shouldn't interfere with the little knob that's right here, but uh, it'll be nice and visible and very clean looking. That looks great. I cannot be happier with that. We can push on it. We have our placard. 
that's going to be phenomenal, especially when we get this uh, facade all back on here. Now, what is left? We have the wiring to take care of. Everything is labeled. You can see those little white guys. But this black wire right here, that's the one that we got to run all the way back to the battery. And we have this little guy that we crimped on to the end when we're done and plug it into the little black thing right there. You can see it. And uh, that'll take care of the light. Then up front, we just have to connect the ground and connect to the battery bus, which happens, or not the bus, the uh, the positive bus, which is over here. So um, I'm gonna have to lay on this down here. This isn't gonna be fun, but let's keep going. You may have noticed I ended up removing the seat right here and that was a good move. I was able to get the negative and positive taken care of and I double checked that with a voltmeter making sure that we are getting full power to it. So now everything is hooked up. So let's turn the master switch on. I heard the battery in the back pop on. If we come up over here, should be able to push this guy. Oh, and it illuminates. That means that the test is working and everything is good. And before I recorded this, I did go and take the plug out back there and I shorted it out to the negative terminal and that light did come on, which means I have passed all my installation tests and the battery is ready to go. All right, so that is almost job done here. We still have our panels put on here and up here and just clean up the airplane and get it put back together. So we're gonna do that next. I'm not gonna bore you guys with it, but when we come back, we'll be pulling the plane out of the hangar and starting it for the first time with the Earth X battery. All right, here we go. Where? Wow, can confirm that Earthpex battery pushed that starter a lot harder than my old one. Wow, guys, I could not be happier with the EarthX battery inside of this. Uh, it started the airplane so quick and so hard. Uh, here's a side-by-side -side comparison real quick so you can see it for yourself and how, how much faster the propeller starts turning over. So EarthX, great product. Guys, if you're interested in setting an EarthX battery for your plane, definitely check out their website because they are getting new STCs for certified aircraft every single week. And so I'm just happy that they had one for my Archer. But guys, that's gonna be it for this video. I gotta put the airplane back inside of the hangar so I can put the cowling on. But uh, I'm not gonna bore you with anything else that I'm doing maintenance-wise right now. So, and that's gonna be it for this video, guys. As always, share aviation wherever you can, and we'll see you in the next one.